Hi, this is Robin Bremer. I'm not sure I have this set up so you can see a couple different views, so I'm not sure what view you're seeing, but my name is Robin Bremer. I'm the author of eight different books about kingdom living, and today I'm going to share with you about walking in the supernatural. I'm going to share with you uh, some experiences that I have had in the supernatural, and then and also share with you how you can have those experiences, how it is normal for you to have supernatural experiences and encounters. So, uh, I hope you can see this. If you can't, it really doesn't matter because I'll be talking about all these things anyway and uh, uh, it will help to remind me of where I'm going. Now, first of all, in the old... Uh-oh. Oh, I am hearing me in my earplugs there. <laughs> okay. In, in the Old and the New Covenant, you'll see that all kinds of supernatural things happen. If you read the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, all kinds of supernatural things happen. And those are available for you. Those are available for every Christian. You see, the supernatural is natural for a Christian. The supernatural belongs to a Christian. And the occult has stolen it from us. The occult and cults have stolen it from us. And made many Christians afraid to walk in the supernatural things of God. Now, first of all, it's really important to remember that it's all about a relationship. It's all about a relationship with the Holy Spirit through the blood of Jesus. We were dead, and then through the blood of Jesus, we became alive because the Holy Spirit, God himself, came to live inside of us. And we are to have a restored relationship with our Father God. Now, if our Father God is supernatural, and we are, He is the Father of glory, we are the children of glory. The glory is God's power, God's presence, the heaviness of God inside of us. That's when pe why people get slain in the Spirit when they uh, get hands laid on, to them, on them. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to share about some of my experiences. And I'm also going to share why you can believe to walk in the supernatural. You can believe to walk in the supernatural uh, because, first of all, Matthew says, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And also in Ephesians, in Ephesians uh, 2, 5 through 6, it says, We are seated in heavenly places. And then Jesus also said that I only do what I see my Father do, and I only do what I hear my Father do. So that's one thing that I practice. I practice hearing from the Holy Spirit, and He gives me pictures in my mind. Uh, for example, I'm somewhere at church, and uh, somebody goes up and needs prayer. Well, well, He'll put a picture in my mind, like one time this woman needed new kidneys. And in my mind, I saw myself walking up to her, laying hands on her sides, and speaking new kidneys into her. And so that's what I did. I did what I saw. So I did what I saw my father do, and I did what I heard him do. And oftentimes uh, he'll say something to me like this person. He'll tell me something about this person like this is my beloved daughter. I'm pleased with her. Tell her to stop feeling uh, sorrow for whatever. Stop. Tell her that I love her. Tell her that this experience here, blah, blah, blah. You know, and tell her this and tell her that. So you have that supernatural connection with heaven and the Holy Spirit to do what you see and you hear your father do. Now these are other things, other scriptures that you can use to believe God for. And I'll read them to you because I don't think that you can see them on the screen. 2 Kings 6, 13 and 17, Elijah said, open his eyes so he can see. And the Holy Spirit opened the, the eyes of the servant so he could see the horses and the chariots of the horses and the angels around him. Now, we can pray the same prayer. I know many people who have prayed the same prayer and who have uh, supernatural experiences. Now, supernatural experiences isn't always seeing angels or seeing demons. It's, it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. So, you can believe for that. Revelations 4.12 says... Uh, he said, uh, the Holy Spirit said to um, John, come up here. And also, in the Old Testament, 75 people went to heaven at the exact same time. They ate with God, and they had fellowship with God, and they were not harmed. So you can see God. Uh, Jesus saw God. Uh, you can experience the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the Father, because he is your daddy. Remember, it's about a relationship. Okay, something else, another scripture that you can use to believe God to experience the supernatural is 2 Corinthians 4.18. It says, 
look not at the things that are seen, but look at the things that are not seen. That's a good one. Second Corinthians 12, 2 says, uh, it talks about uh, Paul being caught up into heaven. If Paul can do it, then we can do it. And God is sovereign. He does what he wants. He does uh, what he wants within his own rules. But we are his children. We can ask for supernatural experiences and encounters. We can expect them because this is what happened in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it's available for us. So we don't have to say, oh, I'm never going to have a visitation of Jesus or a visitation to go to heaven or I'm never going to experience angels because uh, it's God's sovereign will. Well, that's not really true. It is God's sovereign will in, in one sense, but in the other sense, whatever you believe for, you can have. And it's about a supernatural relationship. So if you remember it's about a supernatural relationship, it's a two-way street. You should experience him and he should experience you. You can't fall in love with someone that you can't experience. You can't have a relationship it, it doesn't do no good for, for somebody to get married and then for the bride to walk down the aisle and this couple to get married and then that was it. They were apart the rest of their life. They never experienced each other's presence. They never had any kind of uh, encounters with, with each other. They, they never ate together and did things together. And God wants you to experience Him because He is your Father. Okay, so John... 151 it says uh, that Jesus said to his disciples from now on you know you'll see the heaven open angels coming and going and those are portals of heaven and that's something else that we are allowed to experience that is available to us his kids the kids of glory okay now there's only really one very important thing I want to share with you it's very 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 important when you want to go into uh, receiving supernatural encounters and experiences in the spirit realm uh, through uh, through, fa through the Father God and through the Holy Spirit. There's one thing you have to do. No matter what you're experiencing, if an angel comes to take you somewhere or a, a being from heaven comes to take you somewhere, there's one question that they have to answer right before you should feel free to go and enjoy yourself. And that is, did Jesus Christ come to the earth in the flesh? If they can't acknowledge that, if they're from the demonic, if they're a, a demon disguised as an angel, they will disappear because they can't acknowledge that. So the Bible tells us that's how we test the spirit. So test the spirits when an angel wants to take you somewhere, when an, uh, when you experience something or an angel wants to give you a message. Ask them that. It's as simple as that. Now, some of the things I want to share with you are some really awesome, fun things that happened to me. And the first one I want to share is I saw a spirit of gossip. I, at one time in church, I got offended. Somebody said something to me. I got offended. And the reason I got offended is because I didn't really know if it was that person's job to correct me or not. And so I got offended. But what happened afterwards, I was sitting at home and I was thinking about that offense. And all of a sudden, I saw two, they were actually a spirit of gossip, demon spirits, but but what they looked like was like this. They looked like two fuzzy, dirty, old, stuffed animals like penguins. And they were facing they were facing each other like this. And it looked like two penguins, like a stuffed animal, but like it was it was all dirty and scruffy and everything. And these penguin type birds would face each other and, and they go blah, 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 blah. and then they go ha 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 and as one was talking, it was had his ear up against the other one, and it was like whispering in his ear, and it was going, <laughs> and they were they were demons, they were the spirit of gossip, and that was one of the first supernatural encounters that I've had since I've really been seeking to know the Lord more. Now, one of the other supernatural encounters was what I call the dance, and this happened oh maybe a year ago. And this was really powerful. <clears throat> what happened was I was feeling really stressed out because I had, you know, with the hormones, with menopause, and I was stressed out. And I was just standing under the anointing where the glory is. The church I used to go to, the lighthouse, really has a lot. He, they let the Holy Spirit flow. And the Holy Spirit was flowing and people were falling over and getting slain and whatever was happening. But what happened to me, God all of a sudden 
he is not really a gentleman. Sometimes he's a gentleman, but he's usually not a gentleman. But all of a sudden, he said, just, he said, stop praying, stop praying in tongues, stop worshiping, just breathe, just breathe in the glory. So I, and I breathed in the glory, and all of a sudden, my right hand just started wiggling. I, I it was not under my control. It started wiggling and wiggling. And then my left hand started wiggling. And so my right and my left hand are wiggling and wiggling and wiggling, not under my control at all. And then my right leg started wiggling and wiggling. And then my left leg started wiggling. It was and and it was like doing the hokey pokey. You know, you put your right arm in, you put your left arm in, you put your right arm in, your left foot and your right foot, and you shake it and you move all around. But that's what the Holy Spirit was actually doing to me. He was and and his ways are not our ways. So sometimes <laughs> we don't understand what he's doing when he could be ministering to us in the strangest, most unique way. But I call it the dance because my right arm was shaking, then my left arm was shaking, then my right foot, the left foot, and then I just started shaking all over really, 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 really fast, so fast that, I mean, I couldn't humanly move that fast. And I was just shaking and shaking and shaking, and finally I fell to the ground, and I was rocking, and that's something he does with me a lot when I get slain in the spirit, I rock. He makes me rock back and forth and back and forth. And the first time it happened to me, it was like a prophecy that I would always rock the boat. And I kind of always have because I always wanted more than what the pastors were offering me. And I always got in trouble because I learned, I went out and I studied and had my own experiences with God. And I learned myself. So anyway, that was a dance. And uh, that was a dance. And uh, happy hormones. He just told me just to, to, to just relax and to breathe. Now, boop. Uh, one time, <laughs> this is really fun. One time he got me, the Holy Spirit got me drunk. Uh, he, uh, he, I love to get drunk in the Holy Spirit. You realize that getting high and getting drunk, people do it to get away from their pre the pressures of life and to relax and to enjoy life. But they're a copy of the real thing. You can have the real drunk and the real high in the Holy Spirit and you don't go away having negative um, experiences or negative feelings or bad things happen to you or doing stupid things. It's the natural because the the drugs and alcohol are a copy of the real thing. The real high, the real drunk in the spirit that the Holy Spirit has for you. But this one time I got, I just I got really drunk in the Holy Spirit. Just all of a sudden the Holy Spirit came all over me and I was just really drunk. And I was walking around and I was hitting people in the forehead and going boop just going boop and every time I went boop they'd fall over to the ground and they get slain in the spirit laughing and laughing and laughing and I tell you if you never had a Holy Spirit drunk party you have not experienced life because that is my most favorite thing in the world is having a Holy Spirit drunk party with other people who are excited and are in love with God and so excited about God that they just want to get into God's presence and you end up drunk and laughing and having a good time. So the, other, the next thing is um, the gold dust. And um, one of the times that when I was at my old church lighthouse, the children came out and started praying for people. And as they started praying for the adults, the adults got slain in the spirit. They would fall down. We couldn't even hardly catch them. And I, I'm, I was a altar worker, so I would accidentally catch people and I would cover them and pray for them. <clears throat> and these kids would lay hands on people and they'd get slain in the spirit and they when I go to catch them they'd land on me and knock me down but these kids had gold dust all over their face and all over their hands and it just sparkled and you could see the glory of God on their face and it was really really awesome and I have some teaching on YouTube about the gold dust and gemstones and it's really just it can come from inside of you because you have the glory inside of you so it can come out of your pores and sometimes I get like right now I have a tiny bit of, of gold on me but not very much but um, sometimes it just comes out of the pores and the glory just comes out of the pores and then you have gemstones falling from heaven when people worship because our daddy loves us so much and if we could just get a hold of how much our daddy loves us okay next thing I want to share about you is the blue prayer class <laughs> um, at my old church again a lot of these experiences on this page happen at my old church there is this really really huge guy he's like 6'3 and he's chunky really big and muscular and 
we had laid hands on him and prayed for him. He, he went down under the spirit. And usually when he goes down, he is so out of it. He just kicking and, you know, you have to get people out of the way. And it takes six ushers to hold him down because the power of God is so powerful on him. And he's such a big guy that he could hurt people. So six guys have to kind of like lead him to the ground so that he gets on the ground and he doesn't hurt or kick anybody in when the power of God is manifested on him. Well, I was laying on the floor aside of him. He had landed aside to me and I was praying in the spirit. And I went to get up, so I just, uh, he, he had, uh, he was already starting to get up and he was starting to stand. And I reached over and touched his foot and started praying. And oh my word, was that a mistake? Because he just went all spazzed out and kicking. And there was nobody there to catch him. And he went, boom, straight down. And it's like, oh, thank God he didn't hurt himself. But it was amazing. Just my hand, just reaching out and touching him in faith brought so much power and of the Holy Ghost and the glory to him that he just went out and just was all over the place. Now the next thing <clears throat> I want to share with you is Satan give me my stuff. <clears throat> what happened was one day I was having a dream and sometimes God will talk to you in your dreams. And actually God will talk a lot to you in your dreams. And one day I had this dream and Satan well somebody came to me with a tray of stuff on it and I know it was the devil because he I heard him walk through the house and he and he, I could hear the feet going clunk 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 and he had what I saw was from the tray on down he had goats feet and he was holding out a tray to me and right away I recognized that it was demonic that it was Satan he was trying to hand me something he was trying to hand me sickness or poverty he was trying to hand me something on a tray and I refused to take it I said no in Jesus name I'm not gonna take what you have to offer me I'm not gonna receive it and I commanded him to go and he, he, he was gone <clears throat> another thing was uh, I had another dream about Leah and I thought this dream was about my daughter but in the process of interpreting the dreams, just like Jacob could interpret dreams, you can interpret your dreams. And it's important that if you feel you have an important dream, you ask the Holy Spirit, the revealer of dreams, the teacher, the revealer of hidden things, your helper to, to interpret that dream. But in this dream, I had four, four or five big, huge men that were angels around me. And I was driving in a white van and uh, that the the vehicle you drive in, in in your dreams usually represents your ministry and so that was a little bit about that dream he was just showing me uh, you know showing me revealing a hidden truth to me in my dream on, on a demonic spirit that was disguising itself in my life and and that was a, a spirit called Leah I had on me or attached to me a spirit called Leah and what the spirit of Leah is is a, a spirit um, Leah was the second daughter that Jacob did not want but he had to marry Leah in order to get to Rachel and the spirit of Leah <clears throat> is a spirit that feels worthless and condemned and not valuable and I was feeling that way and the Holy Spirit revealed to me through this dream about that and then uh, once I didn't have no baby formula when my children were very young <clears throat> I went to my cupboard it was all open it was just like one shelf open and it was all open and there was no baby formula there I didn't have any money I didn't have any way to get baby formula <clears throat> I um, my wick vouchers had run out at that time I was living in New Hampshire and I prayed and I said Holy Spirit you're gonna have to give me some baby formula because I don't have any I don't have any money to get any and so I went back and I looked and right there sat a, a, a can of baby formula and that was really cool and about that same time I remember standing in front of my window and I was just singing and praising God and all of a sudden out of my mouth came tongues and it was so cool because it was like I was standing aside of myself listening to tongues come out of my mouth in singing and it was so beautiful and it was just so wonderful and I remember shortly after that <clears throat> that I had felt a satanic spirit a, a, a demonic spirit or Satan nearby me and so I just started praising and worshiping the Lord and then then this demonic spirit was right outside my window I could feel him and sort of see the shape and then I kept praising and worshiping the Lord and then he was a little bit further back and a little and I praised and worshiped the Lord and he was a little bit further back than that and then gone and it made me realize that 
when the demonic is uh, when the de when the demonic is um, watching you, which they are all the time anyway, <clears throat> but when they're really close to you and you feel their presence and you start worshiping, sometimes they will hang around to see if you mean it. And the more that you um, worship, the more you know who you are, the further they'll move away from you and they'll keep moving away and keep moving away. And so I'm going to share with you a few other things that happened to me and there's some really cool stuff that happened really recently. Right now, I just want to share with you that about when I was two years old, believe it or not, when I was actually two years old, I had the devil talk to me and I knew it was the devil when I was two years old. So please do not discount what children say. Children have not lost their imagination. God gave us imagination. The imagination is what looks and sees into the spirit realm. And believe children when they see or hear something because they are more sensitive to the spirit realm than we are. But when I was two years old, and I didn't realize I was this young at the time, <clears throat> my mom had made me a costume with little horns, like a little goat or a little um, animal with horns. And I was crawling on my hands and knees at two years old, being a kid, playing, you know, making noises and crawling with my brother in the same costume, playing. And all of a sudden I heard this voice in my head and he said, and the voice in my head said, get, you know, and I was two years old. And the voice in my head said, get up. You are acting like a kid. You're acting foolish. Get off the ground. And I, I, and I remember thinking at two years old, thinking, well, I am a kid. And so I, I, I did. I got up off the ground. And <clears throat> to this day, I think God has a sense of humor because he made me a clown and a ventriloquist. And I love to make people laugh. But until I became a clown and a ventriloquist, nobody ever laughed at me. You know how funny I tried to be. And I, I never liked to act funny, stupid, because to me it was acting like a child. And that was from that experience that the devil uh, did when I was two years old. Now, I heard that voice. I actually heard the devil's voice one other time. And that was when I was going through a really hard time in my life. I walked past a new age store. And my mom got into new age stuff, so I was very careful to denounce all that stuff and not to have anything to do with it. But I was going through, uh, like uh, 30 years ago, a really hard time in my life, and I went past a New Age store. And I looked at it, and I was going to go in and look for bo some books, thinking maybe there's some Christian books in there that can help me get over this thing. And <clears throat> I looked in, and I said, no, nah, they're not of God. And this voice came in my head again, the same voice that I heard when I was two years old. And it says, you're a big girl. Do whatever you want. You can make up your own mind. Go ahead. Go in that store. And right away, I recognized it as the same voice that I heard when I was two years old when the de devil had talked to me. And I said, just because I recognized that voice, I said, no, I'm, I'm not I'm not going there. I'm not going to do that. So I didn't. And I didn't go in the store. So that's the second time I had heard the devil's voice outright and I knew it. I'm not going to talk about the seven times I tried to raise people from the dead. And that's something that we all can do. He says, heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, preach the gospel to the poor. Raising the dead is just as easy, maybe easier, than getting somebody healed because you don't have to fight their faith. You just raise them from the dead. You just have to know who you are and that you have authority over death. And the more I know, the more uh, when I get opportunities, I try to raise someone from the dead. I only physically was able to touch three of them and believe for them to raise from the dead. And I had only like three minutes to do it. It was a really short time. So I didn't really get to stand on my faith. But I don't want to talk about that today. Uh, <clears throat> these are the more recent things that happened to me in the supernatural. And that is uh, dancing with the bridegroom. This was really cool. Um, I was at my old church, the lighthouse, and I was, um, they, I was praying. And they always play praise and worship music when we pray. <coughs> Excuse me. And I was praying and I was just getting ready to leave and this wonderful love song came on so I just closed my eyes and all of a sudden Jesus was standing all of a sudden you know it was so cool because all of a sudden Jesus was standing in front of me and he started dancing with me he started I was swaying to this love song about how much I love Jesus and just swaying and he would he would spin me out and he'd spin me in he dip me and he twirl me and what was so cool about dancing with Jesus I mean he was so gentle and so fun and what was so cool I mean I, it was an open vision it, it was a vision I had my eyes closed 
and I, but I was aware of everything around me, but I was seeing myself dance with Jesus. And what was really cool was as he was spinning me out and spinning me in and he was twirling me and dipping me, the look in his eyes was so cool because not only did I see love in his eyes, but I saw something else that took me a while to figure out what it was I saw. And what I saw in his eyes was playfulness. He was enjoying playing with me. That is so awesome and cool. He was playing with me and it showed in his eyes. His eyes sparkled and danced. And not only was there love, but there was playfulness in Jesus' eyes while he was dancing with me. So that was a lot of fun. And <clears throat> the other thing is the drum. And that was a dream. And I believe that was when um, I was getting an, a, an assignment of taking over an old intercessor's dream. Uh, job and receiving their mantle or their their position or something uh, because I was beating him I was standing in front of the ocean and I was <clears throat> this old old person was beating with a wooden spoon inside of a wooden drum was beating uh, music and I came up to them and I became them and inside the the wooden drum and, and uh, wood represents humanity uh, and our you know our sin nature and I was beating an egg an egg yolk and I was beating an egg yolk and making this awesome music with the drum the spoon inside and I was beating it faster and faster and faster than is humanly possible and making the most beautiful sounds and then all of a sudden like that I woke up and I could sense a presence in my room and I knew that it was a supernatural encounter. See, oftentimes your dreams are not dreams. They're supernatural encounters. So don't disregard, don't disregard them. Ask the Holy Spirit about them. What kind of presence do you feel when you wake up in the room? How do you feel energized? And know the difference between demonic dreams and, and natural dreams of your spirit trying to tell you something and dreams where the Holy Spirit's trying to tell you something. Okay, now the other thing that happened to me lately that has been really exciting is oh this is so much fun I ask God to do this every night and he's been doing this for about a month uh, a couple months off and on and for a while it was every night week after week he shows me just as I'm getting ready to go to sleep he flashes colors in my head he flashes color combinations of gemstones I have my eyes closed and I'm getting ready to go to sleep and and these beautiful beautiful colors like silver and turquoise and you'd see like a silver diamond and a turquoise uh, stone or a turquoise turquoise colored gemstone and it was gemstones and they were it was the color combinations they were so absolutely beautiful that it took it literally took my breath away I go <gasps> you know I go because <gasps> it, it was so beautiful and he'd flash these colors and flash these colors. One combination, one, boom, another, 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 another. And he just flashed these color combinations of gemstones. And they were absolutely gorgeous. And then after that, he started flashing gowns, like bridal gowns with beautiful embroidered stones. The stones were embroidered right into the gown and they were he was showing me the color combinations like like these are bridal gowns these are gowns you know for my bride or and and the color combinations of the stones were again breathtaking and then he started showing me jewelry he started showing me jewelry with precious gemstones but the combination of jewelry and it was like <gasps> They take my breath away again. They were absolutely gorgeous, and that was a that was I was wide awake. I was laying down with my eyes closed, and experiencing these. And then just recently, just a couple days ago, he started showing me like like Christmas trees with colored lights on them. But they weren't lights; they were like streaks, and that would go all around the tree, and they'd like travel real fast, like shoom, and you see like blue and green and. It was just gorgeous. I just love, there is no TV can be as exciting, no game, no TV can be as exciting as experiencing the supernatural things of God. And then just lately, I have this horrible vacuum cleaner my daughter gave me. And for some reason, it sounds like somebody stuck a sock in it. And it just goes, Ooh, I mean, the decibel, decibels or whatever are so high. My husband, who was a machinist, said at work they have to wear earplugs because the deci decibels are so high that 
it hurts your ears and he says the vacuum cleaner was even louder than that and in fact it was so loud that when my neighbors came over they asked me what that noise was because <laughs> they could hear it in their house well one day I was vacuuming just recently and I was vacuuming and I said to myself I said God I really wish this vacuum cleaner would stop making so much noise and work right and just like that it stopped making noise I mean the second I said that thought in my head the vacuum cleaner stopped making that horrible sound and sound like a normal vacuum cleaner and it's worked ever since and so God is so much fun uh, one of the other things is oh this is really funny kind of it well what happened was I was I was really sick I, well okay what happened was I kind of was getting sick and usually I don't get sick because if I feel like a, a sore throat or a cough I just say um, in Jesus name I command the symptoms of sickness to go I'm not under the curse I've been redeemed from the curse um, I command you to go I do not receive these symptoms and they go I mean it might take a day it might take an hour it might take 10 minutes but they go and so excuse me, I was kind of weak and I had, well, started watching this movie and I didn't like the movie and I didn't like the way the movie felt it was about demons and it was uh, Kubo Jr. was in it and it was about when when these people touched another person the demon that was in this person would jump to the other person and and so I didn't like it I knew I shouldn't be watching it because I, I don't watch anything fearful or scary uh, because there's enough stuff around I don't I don't need that I don't want a spirit of fear when you watch something scary and fearful it puts a deposit in your soul a layer in your soul of that fear and you have to get rid of it it kind of gives permission for the devil to harass you and make you afraid so what I did I wanted to turn it off but my husband kept watching it so it stayed on and I watched it like this almost the whole show I watched like this because uh, I, I didn't even want to hear the sounds of it but what happened was a demon was transferred because of watching that show and for about a week I just was being attacked over and over and over I felt the spirit of fear and was being attacked and attacked and I think that's about the time I, I had kidney stones I never had a kidney stone in my life but what what happened was I, I just was weak and I was fighting it and I was fighting it from the point of fear instead of the point of knowing who I am in victory and <clears throat> all of a sudden I came to a point where I had it's like okay I'm not putting up with this and all of a sudden a, a demon head appeared up on my wall like you know how you have a deer trophy that you put the head up on the wall when you have a deer trophy well that's what the demon was like he was up on my wall he had stuck his head through my wall and his head was up on my wall like this mounted like it was mounted up on my wall and he was just had his head there like this you know here's the wall and he's just sticking his head his head through there and he was real of course evil looking he looked like a goat I think goats are cute but he looked like a goat all ratty and ugly and evil and had horns all over and <clears throat> he just stuck his head up there and I saw him and I, that really made me mad because it's like how dare you so now I knew what I was dealing with so now I had boldness because I had come face to face with a demon and I knew who I was and I knew I had authority and dominion over him and that demon was not allowed to be in my house so I got really bold and brave because I was mad and I went up and I stuck my face about about an inch about this far away from his face I went up to the wall and I reached up there and I stuck my face and I pointed my finger at him and I said in Jesus name I command you to leave you have no right here demon you leave my house and you don't return and I just quoted who I you know I know who I was I know he was illegal he was not allowed to harass me and he had to go and <clears throat> I mean I just got my face right in front of that demon about an inch away and said that to him and let me tell you take you back a little bit right before that happened I had a dream and in the dream I looked in the mirror and I saw my face and then my face turned into morphed into a demon face and then it smiled at me and I went Hah. it smiled at me the demon face smiled at me and I knew I was in trouble then and so I started coming against it then and then within that week time is when this stuff happened and the demon manifested its head up on my wall and that's when I took authority over it now some of the other things that mm, um, <clears throat> one of the other demonic experiences that I had is I walk past a, <clears throat> a graveyard whenever I go and walk up over the mountain for my exercise and I walk past it you know 
all the time in the summertime, not so much in the winter. And I've walked through the graveyard before. But this particular time when I walked past the graveyard, um, one of the statues, it looked like, uh, you know, there's a statue. It's supposed to be like a little angel, like a little girl. And it has these, um, like has a scarf on it or its robe is like hanging. Well, that thing became alive and <clears throat> it floated straight up and straight over and it followed me all the way up the mountain, all the way down the mountain and into, in, into the, my yard. It didn't come in my house. It stayed out in my yard for a whole day. That demon from the graveyard followed me. And I rebuked it. I commanded it to go. And, and it, it just hung around just to see if I knew what I was talking about. It hung around for almost a day until it finally it finally left. But it just followed me all the way home from the graveyard. And so that was one of the experiences. Now, some of the good experiences was I had a dream and I was dancing in heaven. And it was it's so cool when you get to visit heaven. And what happened was <clears throat> I danced with veils. And I, now I dance with ribbons and flags too, but I was uh, in the dream, in the dream I was transported to heaven and I was in the big banqueting hall. It was all wood and it had a ceiling and the ceiling had holes in it, like little tiny holes all over it and beams of sunlight came through those holes and, and the angel started singing and I started dancing and I was so excited because I knew the song that the angels were singing. So I was singing with the angels while I was dancing on the banqueting banquet floor in heaven. And I was just dancing and twirling like like I envisioned myself dancing, like I see myself dancing without limitations in my body and twirling and jumping into my veil and like ice skaters, you know how beautiful they are. That's how I saw myself dancing. Well while, while I was dancing in heaven, I would throw my veil up and I would just gracefully, you know, jump. <laughs> into my veil and catch it and twirl and it was just so beautiful but what was really cool is as I was dancing and praising God in heaven in the banqueting hall the angels and me were singing together and that was a really cool experience and I've had another encounter with angels uh, I went to Marge, Margie Barlett's church I believe in Chicota, and <clears throat> I was I was worshiping and praising and all of a sudden I heard two angels with me like one on either side and it was like I was going, like I was praying in tongues, like I can't sing very good when you guys are listening. <clears throat> but anyway, as it was like like there was a mirror there in a square, and it was like it's kind of hard to explain. There was like three dots there, like me and two other dots, and and it was like the angels were following me as I was going here in the song, and here, and then here. And then here, it was like the angels were singing with me. And it was like we were circling this mirror. We were just all harmonizing together. Or they were harmonizing with me. But it was really beautiful. And that's another time I sang with the angels. And um, the mirror. Oh, the last thing, the last one that I want to share with you is the mirror. This is really cool. <clears throat> I was talking with Jesus or something. I don't remember what the situation was. And... Um, all of a sudden I saw a mirror and I looked up and looked in myself in the mirror and all of a sudden what I saw in the mirror wasn't me it was Jesus looking back at me and I went what I jumped like in shock like what how come I'm looking in the mirror and my reflection that I'm seeing is Jesus and he got a kick out of it and he sort of snickered and, and laughed and like said well what do you expect you're a reflection of me so I thought that was um, a really cool thing let me see. Yes, I probably need to get off of my time here. But when Jesus laughed when I looked in the mirror and saw him instead of me in the mirror, I just thought that was really cool because his response was like, <gasps> my response was like, <gasps> I look in the mirror and I see Jesus. And Jesus' response was, <laughs> what did you think? You know, he was snickering and laughing. And, well, what did you think? You're a reflection of me. And that's the thing I want to leave you with today that you are a reflection of Jesus, that you are in Jesus and Jesus is in you. And so... Um, everything he did you can do and the word says that you will do even greater things because he went to heaven and sent back the Holy Spirit so expect supernatural counter encounters give give it credit if you see a shaft of light over here or a flash of light here like I see flashes of light in my bedroom all the time I know it's angels visiting just last night I was seeing uh, orbs uh, little uh, golden and little yellow balls you know flashing in my room and I know that they're, they're probably angels. 
Um, I don't quite understand everything about that, but what I want to leave you with is you can experience the supernatural. You should expect the supernatural. You should expect heavenly encounters. You are seated in heavenly places. And <clears throat> you are a child of God. So expect supernatural encounters. Don't be afraid of it. The supernatural belongs to you. Keep a journal. And every time something happens, um, ask God, is that you? Acknowledge it. Say, thank you, God, for that experience. The more you thank him, the more you acknowledge little things like a, a flash of light or uh, feeling his presence and the more you acknowledge it the more you will have it and the more you will experience it so keep a journal remember to be thankful remember always to test the spirits if an angel wants to take you somewhere always ask them the key question is do you believe that Jesus Christ came to the earth in the flesh and they will disappear if they're not from God if they're from God they will not be offended and they will say yes um, Jesus is the son of God and he came to earth at, in the flesh and that's your that's your key question so enjoy supernatural encounters and um, make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube go to my website get my free um, book on angels and uh, check out my VIP subscribers for ten dollars a month I have special subscribers you can subscribe and get videos like this <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put this for VIPs only or if I'm gonna go ahead and let everybody have it but I do special things for VIPs and in the process of time, my VIPs that pay $10 a month as on my subscription site for the extra tools and things, I'm going to invite into a Google Hangout like this where they can go ahead and ask uh, questions and stuff and be right there on the bottom of the strip and be part of it. So um, I'll, if you have any questions, I'm not sure. I'm still learning how to do some of this stuff. So if you have, I think there's my question, my comment tracker. I think you have to be watching on YouTube. I'm live on YouTube. I'm live on Google Hangouts right now. And I'm live on my website, robinbremer.net right now. So I'm not sure where you have to actually be to ask questions. But if I think you have to be on YouTube go, uh, under Feed My People Joy. That's my uh, name on uh, YouTube, Feed My People Joy. Uh, if you go there you should be able to ask questions <clears throat> either this time or next time but it, you can always leave comments underneath and um, if you ask me a question I might make a video just for you uh, if you have a special question so my name is Robin Bremer net is my website check it out and I hope that this broadcast has been a blessing to you